Oh, misty teeth of the brush of the gold. Oh, how we got to go over hand. Over this mountain so we can go over. And start a war against those fools. Random taking out of the way, though. <laughs> Hey guys and gals, it's 3D Dante, and welcome back for some more Fire Emblem Shadow, Shadow Dragon. Last time we were here, we landed on the ports of... Actually, I forget what port specifically. Yay! I don't remember my my own parts. Uh, in this part right here, we're heading to the, to the Gull's Teeth right here. The area that is said to be pretty dangerous. Full of... Dangerous, nameless bandits that nobody cares about. Seriously, it's like after, after this chapter, we are no. It, it's just like nobody really cares about them after this chapter is over. But anyways, um, we start off this chapter with a little cutscene right here with two new characters that we are able to use right away. We have Lena, who is our second clerk in the game, and we have Julius, who is our first thief. Uh, I guess I can already go over and explain. Well, actually, I'm not going to say what a thief is, but pretty much this cutscene right here is saying, I freed you from that place for a reason, and I backstrapped my own peep, my own buddies over there for a reason. There is no way we're going back for that thing right away, and, and there's no way I'm abandoning you. So no, we're just going to kind of go at this point. And meanwhile, this is this guy that just, that's just... Looks over there. It's like, oh my gosh, is this guy is this guy really that much of a fool? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just and huh, um, I know some things have not changed. In the okay, well, maybe not, but eh, just kind of eh. Um, anyways, um, this chapter as a whole is just eh, it's not one of the Oh, it's, the, it's one of the more uninteresting maps in the game because, well, as you guys can kind of see right here, this map is pretty big, <laughs> and there's not a lot of enemies here in this big open space right here. Yeah, it makes absolutely no sense why it's like that. It just is. <laughs> Because as you can see right here, um, we have a total of 15 enemy units right here, and most of them, most of them are up in the upper halfway up there that we that we can take. While the others are just well, kind of there to be honest. But anyways, um, I went over in strips, uh, worst right here for Lena. Lena is a is an excellent clerk to have. For one specific reason, not, and we're not going to get to that one specific reason for a long time. Just saying this right here, she is an excellent clerk to have, and she has a warp on her to start off with, which... Well, if you use that warp on your allies, you can warp them to a specific tile. I believe it's either within a specific range or it's anywhere on the map. I know it's like that for other games where it's just where it's just a specific distance, but here it might be anywhere actually. So there's that right there, and also heading to that village right there, you get the Devil's Axe, which does a lot of damage, but the major drawback to it is that it does it, it can do da it geez. it also does damage to you. So you're trading off your health for power, pretty much. So, if you want to do massive damage, but don't really care about your health, it's, it is a brilliant weapon for you. Um, with that being said though, um, why am I showing off this animation right here? This is like nothing different. Alright? There. <laughs> um, anyways, um, I mentioned before that we just got our first thief right here. Um, our first lovely, lovely thief right here. Um, thieves are very fast units, high speed, high skill, but they cannot do a lot of damage though. They are pretty weak 
in terms of power right here. But the one major thing about Thebes that makes them pretty worthwhile is that they are able to open up locked doors and, and chests. So for any indoor missions that you have or any missions that evolve that has chests or locked doors around the in, in the map, they are great to have for those. Um, so they are great there. Besides that though, not all not really all that special. And thieves in this game are just not all that good, to be honest. I mean really, just besides their unique ability, there's no other reason to use them in in this game. I'm not kidding when I say that, there's absolutely no reason to do that, and I like it how since I was already right next to a thief right there, I can just jab I could just use the javelin to kill it right away and get an automatic level. That was amazing. <laughs> Um, anyways, um, if we have Sita talk to this, to this lovely, lovely man that just stared at us in, in disbelief earlier ago, we are able to recruit Navar, who is our first, jeez, he is our first Myrmidon in the game. Myrmidons are similar to these, I guess you can say, but they have a lot more, they have, they have a lot, jeez. They either have a lot more speed or a lot more skill than the than the thieves. And not only that, but most thieves, well, well, well not these, but most Myrmidons typically have the killer lance. Ever have a yes, a killer lance? No, a killer sword to start off with. Which the killer the killer weapons? I should say this right here. They are not bad damage damaging weapons. But not only that, they are also able to inflict some... They also have higher crit rate chances. So, they are nice weapons to use there. The only problem with them is that they are pretty rare to find. So, for that reason alone, not the best weapon in the world to use, to be honest. But once again, as a whole, Myrmidons are actually pretty, they're pretty good sweeping units to have even if you want to have more sweepers and all that lovely stuff right there. I'm personally not going to be using Navar for this flavor right here. Not saying that, not saying that Navar is a bad unit or anything like that. I just prefer, I prefer more raw power and defense while I'm at it than just straight up speed, just straight up all speed and all, and all skill. Since I'll I'll say this right here, um, <laughs> Lord, um, Myrmidons do not have good defense. I mean, they're kind of similar to mercenaries in a way, but the only real major downfall of them is that they do not have good defense. So they have that downfall right there. And wow, I almost lost my one and only pirate right there. That was close. I mean, I wouldn't really care to be honest, but hmm. Kind of, kind of, kind of a close call right there, and ooh, um, almost a close call for Aqua to go down right there, though. Not to be honest, he didn't really go down in the end right there, so not that big of a deal, to be honest. And I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do with Mark right here. Just going to have him attack not like normal. That is perfectly fine. Uh, what do I have the others do? Um, I think I try to have him kill him, and I did kill him. Sweet. Plus I get a free level up, so it's even better there! And my lord, Discord notifications, you are lovely as usual, but... The one different thing about Discord notifications for me now is that they do not appear in the left corner of the freaking screen anymore! So... I'm glad for that at least! I still get notified from them, like, from time to time... But they're not putting them on the screen, I'm more hearing the notification sounds for them. So, I know there's still stuff going on in Discord, but it's not directly telling me anymore. Which, I like that part at least. I really do. Uh, meanwhile, I think I just have see the kill, kill the hunter right there, yep. And since now we cleared up this upper area right here, there's literally no reason to be up there anymore. So, there's that much there. <laughs> Uh, also, another thing about the warp right there, um, just like every other staff, weapon, whatever, really, there's a, there's a limit. There is a limit to the amount that you can use right here. So, so really, use, 
Use your warps for for situations that you will that you know you'll need them for. I'm not gonna be using them for a while. And I'm definitely not gonna be using them until I run into, into a situation that I absolutely need them. I will say that much right there. Meanwhile, having Bars going over and murdering that one fighter right there, and oh hey, we're already we're already almost done with the chapter right here, and we still have a good nine minutes left in the part. Yay! And I'm not kidding. This is literally me trying to get all the units that I particularly care about over to the boss fight, just so I'm able to take down the boss. Yeah. You gotta imagine how long that's gonna take, especially since I have a good, like, two that are, are, that are up in the mountains right here. So that right there doesn't help either. Not the best situation in the world, but it is what it is. So anyways, um, while we're going through this right here, um, I guess some lovely topics I can talk about this time around. Um... Well, um, I guess those, um, well, by the time of this recording, any, anyways, um, anybody here excited for Sword and Shield to come out, and why does everybody hate, hate it so much? I swear, it's like, I'm, I'm hyped for the game to come out, but I'm hearing a lot of negative things about it. It's like, oh my gosh, not all the Pokemon's got, gonna be in the game. Such a terrible game now, talented. Look at all, and look at how terrible these pop-up issues are in the look. The texture is being so terrible. Ugh. When you realize your favorite game, Breath, Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild, was the ex had the exact same problems, but I didn't see anybody complain about that game. So what gives? Is <laughs> is my thing. Ah. Uh. Like seriously, I mean, I mean to be completely honest, I almost had Fire Emblem Three Houses ruined for me before that came out because I heard so many negative things about that game. I was just like, wow, should I even get this? Because of how terrible, because of how everybody's saying that's gonna be a terrible game. I literally went over and watched a Game Explain um, review on it, well, at least a little bit, anyways. And that was the thing that convinced me to buy it to begin with. It's like, okay, you people are lying. This is actually a good game. And I'm glad I got it because it is by far one of my favorite Fire Emblem games out there, to be honest. Kind of tied for Awakening for me, to be honest. I I love their houses that much. <laughs> well, I've only done like two successful playthroughs on there. Um, two for each house. I still need to go over and finish my Black Eagle run, which. <sighs> Having, like, two major events that can change the story, meaning that you have four different ra ways to go into one route out of three. I did not like that when it came to that. I am so glad the other houses did not do that because... Ugh. I did not like that at all. I'll say this here though, not saying that the game's bad or anything like that, like that. it's still, it, it is a phenomenal game, and if you want to play a Fire Emblem game for the, just for the Switch, or just a, any of the newer ones really, I, I could definitely recommend Three Houses to anybody really. Um, I wouldn't say it's like the best game to start off with, I mean if we're going to be talking about Fire Emblem games to start off with for those who haven't played the series. Um, if I had to recommend a Fire Emblem game to start off with, I would say Awakening, because of how simple that game is. And it's not overly hard, either. It's actually a, it's a very simple game to go for, to be honest. But anyways, so since I got everybody over here now, we're gonna uh, now go over and attempt fighting the boss right here, and... Ah, it's just like your other buddy from all the... From earlier, go back down the port. You cannot hit anything, apparently. And I think I just leave him, leave him alone, actually. Yeah, I just leave him alone for a bit, which... Since he's in the area that they can use the proper health right here, he can... Well, 
slowly recover health every time it's 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 it's, it's his turn. So really, when it comes to these kind of boss fights right here, take them down as quick as you can. And did he seriously still not hit me right there? Really? Okay, I'm about to say. Okay, see that you can't hit him, darling. I I mean I know you really want to, but you cannot do that. And Mars and Mars the major risk right there. Also, and I was like, why am I not having Kane kill him? He can, he can sweep from no, no problem. Uh, I mean, Abel probably could, but but the chances of him killing with the javelin right there is really slim. Uh, your chances of killing with the axe is also really slim. I think I just want Zeta to get the experience. More thinking about it, I'm not entirely sure though. Uh, I think I just have Brock go over and try to kill him right here, which actually didn't happen. So, apparently, these bandit leaders cannot hit for the life of them. Ah. Interesting. Interesting. Never in my life had I had, I had to experience that before. <laughs> but anyways, uh, that is pretty much the end of the chapter right here, and I'm just getting in some unique dialogue that you can get from this chapter right here. Uh, one we saw earlier with Julius and Marv, pretty much Julius saying, Hey, I want to join you guys. I may be a thief, but I scrub my hands clean, and I want to work for you now. Um, besides that, there's also one with Namara and Marv, which, Namar's, which is pretty much Namara saying, Hey, I, I, hey, I'm going to join you. Just point, just point your sword, just, just point your sword towards my enemies, and I will go over and kill them. I don't know, he's, he's one of those... Like, he's one of those people that goes over and just kills for the heck of it, really. Surprised the, I'm surprised the Mars not really a mercenary, though, for that reason. Because he's because he acts more like a nurse mercenary than Ahmed does, actually. Uh, it's like, Ahmed should be the Myrmidon and Navar should be the mercenary. I don't know, something like that. But, anyways, um, bit of a spoiler alert, spoiler alert right here. I'm gonna take some time having Lena heal up everybody right here, get as much, much experience for her as possible. This is this is something I like doing for the end of missions for medics right here. I like I like to go over and pretty much heal everybody up whenever I can. Not not when it's situational, just whenever I can. It's like you may just take take a scratch. Jeez, you might have just taken a scratch from a cat right there. A very small one, for the record. Hey, that thing inflicted one damage to you. I'm healing you, just so I can get that experience. Jeez, because if you can play your guards just right and heal all the time with, with your medics right here, they can they can reach max levels way before your actual fighting units right here. So... There's that much right there. Um, anyways, um, also another thing I should say right here, um, well, not really say, but... The bandit leader had a men, which, the story of the chapter right here, um, Lena right here forgot her, forgot her men. It was, it's pretty much her, her way of healing. So, unless you don't give, um, Lena your heal staff from worse, from worse, or you just don't have worse at this point. I don't know, you probably got him killed by bandits because you just do not like the old fool. I was like, you probably don't like the old man, which I, don't, I won't blame you. It's not really all that interesting. <laughs> so, for that reason alone, she, uh, Lita is kind of worthless in this chapter until you get her men back. So, there's that much there, but if you give her give her your heal right away, she's able to do stuff right away. But that means you're sacrificing... He's not really sacrificing, it's more like you you have the other medic doing absolutely nothing in that case. But anyways, um, since I healed up everybody right here, um, at, the, at the end of the chapter right here, uh, we get 15,000 gold. That's how much they looted the other villages. They, they taxed them because they own this territory, they own this mountain. Because it is a lovely and glorious mountain of gold right there. <laughs> I mean, I can't think of other any, of any other explanations right there. But anyways, 
That's the Soothsayers. We will never see them ever again. So they are forever forgotten. Just like every other bandit gang. I'm not kidding when I say that. Anyways, that is it for now. Next time we'll be here, we'll be going through Chapter 4. You know I don't know titles right away until I actually do the... Until we get to those chapters. With that being said, I'll see you guys. Until then.